Hey guys, Dwayne here at 8 -Bit Vinyl, and today I wanted to talk about the new Legacy cabinets. Um, the, older, the overall uh, consensus on the cabinet is it had a lot of design issues, so I'm here to help solve some of those issues today with some of my videos. So this video we're going to talk about how to build a riser for a riser for this particular cabinet. So if you're sick of the overall height and you want the gameplay experience to be a little bit more satisfactory, stick around. I'm going to get my old coals on. We're going to go through the design flaws of this and how to fix them. I'm going to go out to the garage and give you some instructional video on how to make this riser. And we're going to get right into it. Um, anybody who's been following my channel knows that I've been working on the Street Fighter Legacy Cab, Capcom Legacy Cab. And I moved the control deck up uh, for in previous videos as well as pushed the marquee out. Um, love that design. Um, but obviously the issues are still screen. Screen visibility, uh, especially for taller people. So what I'd like to do today is um, I'm in my old clothes. We're gonna go out to the garage. I'm gonna do a little instructional video on how to raise this cabinet up. I'm going to actually raise it up. And so it's even with this uh, this custom made golden tea riser that I have next to me. So this is a 16 and a half inch riser. I'm gonna make this level out to this. So, um, so I'll kind of go over some measurements of, of how we're gonna cut it or at least rough guesstimate it, uh, the riser out and we'll go from there. Okay, apologies for the shaky video, but I will try to give you a feel for how I tend to measure this up. So here's my tape measure. You can see from the bottom of my custom-made riser, so I make them even out. 16 and a half inches there, you can see. Coming over to the stock. Tape measure stuck, sorry. Coming over to the stock riser. We're about 13 and a quarter. Um... Exact, exact science, no, but it has to be pretty close. So we're about 13 and a quarter. So that means the difference between the two is going to be approximately three and a quarter inches that we need to make the spacer to go underneath underneath uh, the bottom of this to be flush mounted. Now, as far as the length and width, um, we're just gonna do a rough guesstimate just so we can set our saw. So you can see that most of these risers are give or take 20 inches. So I'm just gonna overcompensate and say 20 inches for now. Um, and the sides are mm, not much different. So we're gonna say 20 inches. So we're gonna make four sides. I'm actually gonna do eight pieces because I plan to get the, the uh, Midway Legacy cabinet and I'll need the same design for that as well. So the next video will be out in the garage and we'll show you how to rip some of this stuff up. All right guys, so here we are out in the garage. This is just some um, some MDF that I had lying around. This is half inch uh, slash seven sixteenths um, from your local home store uh, that you can get. You can get in two by two, uh, two and a half foot, uh, I'm sorry, two foot by two foot square piece uh, there. You could also get it in two foot by four foot square piece, um, whatever um whatever floats your boat so that's basically where i got this stuff this thickness does match the thickness of the riser because it is going to be a flush mount riser i'm actually going to mount it from inside the riser to this new spacer that we're building so looking over here i have my saw blade set up at the three and a quarter inches um from this distance to this distance you can see right here, three and a quarter, um, right here. Uh, so that's so I'm gonna rip four pieces of this to basically make the side walls and the front and back uh, for our bottom. Apologies that the shop is a mess. It's a garage. What do you want? <laughs> Okay guys, so uh, we're back here in the garage um, and I'm moving over here to my chop saw. Um, you don't need this huge uh, 12 inch radial arm, so you don't need all that. You probably could just, or this is, yeah, this is a 12 inch. You could just use a 10 inch or a small saw. It's not a big deal. It's just something to cut the length and it's easier than my table saw. 
So anyways, you um, can use a jigsaw if you're good with your hand, steady hand. Anyways, um, I already went inside and I measured the, the width um, of the front and back of the arcade one-up cabinet, which in this case is um, 19 and 13 sixteenths. So just in case you guys are not tape measure savvy, um, tape measures come in quarters. You got 19 and a quarter, 19 and a half, 19 and three quarters, and it's that one mark after 19 and three quarters. So anyways, um, the front and back will be 19 and, th 19 and 13 sixteenths, the width of the cabinet. The depth of the cabinet or the length will be 19 and 7 eighths. So actually the depth of the cabinet is a little bit wider, believe it or not, than the front and back, even though the front and back panels are the ones that you see the screw holes in in the front side. So uh, I'm gonna cut those up on the chop saw, make my marks with a pencil, and, um, and then we can start basically assembling it. All right, guys, so just so you can see our measurements that I, uh, that I marked with a pencil here. This uh, this will be the front and the back of the riser spacer. So um, this this right here, I'm measuring 19 and 13 sixteenths. I'll literally um, mirror up two of these exactly, like so. Kind of just butt these ends up real real close on um, on this end here against the saw. Sorry about my camera angle and or shakiness. The garage is not really the ideal setup for this. So I'm just kind of feeling right here with my finger. As long as that feels really, uh, really smooth and right up against the edge. That's where it is. So we'll make our cut and we'll get both front and back at the same time. This feels even. This feels good. <laughs> Take our measurement just for the sake of it. All right, 19 and uh, 13 sixteenths. And so this one will do basically the same process, only we're gonna measure the agreed upon at 19 and seven eighths for the sidewalls, and uh, which I have marked here, just so you guys understand what I'm doing. And we'll go ahead and cut that up. All right, guys. Now, um, just as a double check, I went back inside um, just to make sure my measurements were correct because the last thing I want to do is put this all together and then I cut it wrong. So... Um, just as a safety thing, a paranoia thing, uh, an old rule of thumb is to measure twice, cut once. I measure 25 times and cut once. So that's just um, how I was taught in uh, some tips and tricks of the trade. Um, so this thing here, does these fit exactly to the Street Fighter II um, Capcom Legacy riser or any other arcade one-up riser if we're talking about that. Um, so I know my measurements are correct before I even assemble. So what I'm going to do, uh, oh, so just another little tidbit that I always do with my pieces when I build anything at all. Um, I always try to look at the board that I cut. This side here looks really clean. I don't have a lot of burn marks from the, from the cross cut on the table saw. Where this side, you can kind of see how it burned it. Um, obviously you want that side down, like near the floor where you're never gonna see it. All this is being painted anyway, but just in case the paint uh, does not cover well or bleeds through, or maybe even this this burn mark, the saw took just a scrape more here and there on the edge. Um, it's gonna look a little. It's not gonna look so hot um, on the top of it. It'll look like you kind of cobbed it. And we want our riser to sit on here, nice and clean and flush and seamless. So. That's kind of why I picked this edge. Another tidbit on this is uh, I always label which panel is what. I kind of pick the better side that I want to put my paint on or my vinyl on or whatever. Really nice and clean cut side. There's not a lot of chips, holes, 
whatever, slivers in it. Um, and I always put uh, which side I want the top on so when I'm assembling, there's no mystery. I can just kind of put it up like this and be like, oh, yeah, this side goes up. All this is on the inside anyway. You'll never see it. And on top of that, when we, uh, which I'll show later, we'll sandwich the new box against the new riser so it will all literally be one piece. Um, so we're going to put all this together. I'm going to use inch and five eighths regular coarse cut drywall screws. You can get them at any local hardware store or home store of your choice. Um, it's nothing, nothing to write home about. The standard drywall, um, inch and five eighths. And what I what I'm going to do is pre-drill about half the thickness of the board here with a countersunk hole. So this can recess inside the hole. And, and I'm going to do it with the drill bit that fits the interior of these little push button caps. Now, if anybody's wondering what these are, they sell these on eBay. They're just called screw hole covers for any arcade one up cabinet. I'll try to leave a link in the description, but I'm still really new to how to implant things into my channel. So if I don't, I'm, I'm just letting you know what these are. Screw cap hole covers um, for arcade machines. They come in various sizes and whatever you decide to build or whatever you countersink your hole, make sure that they're these caps. They come in small, medium, and large. It's pretty vague um, and they come in bulk. So you'll get 25 or 50 a pack or something in assorted colors of your choice. Um, very cheap to buy. Um, less than 10 bucks, six bucks, something like that. I think I paid. I don't even know. I bought these two, three years ago. So I just have an overabundance of them and um, I'm gonna kind of push them in the holes after it's all painted. It'll be the last finishing touch and it'll just make a nice clean look. It won't look like I put a big blocky piece of cabinetry on something that was bought from a store. I'm always in the back of my mind is whatever I build for these cabinets, I kind of want it to look like something that if I saw it in a store, that's the way it came. But that's only my pet peeve. Um, not, not a requirement by any means and not a judgment. It's just, um, it's going to be in my home and it has to match my furniture and Hey man, happy wife, happy life. You, everybody can relate. So you got to make it kind of aesthetically pleasing as arcade cabinets could possibly be. Hey guys. So sorry about the shaky video. It's my camera, uh, shaking a little bit. Um, so we're over here at the drill press and we're about to pre-drill the front and back of the riser spacer that I'm making. Um, and this is a 964th drill. We're just gonna do a through hole right through it. And how I measured this on both uh, on both sides here and here is I basically measured uh, half the distance of the thickness of this board. And this is a half inch, so it's gonna be a quarter inch. So my quarter inch is this distance right here from here to here. And this distance from this distance, I just gave myself a little bit more leeway. I made it three eighths of an inch. So the round black push buttons have some clearance and, and my edge of my round push button doesn't overlap this because then it will just look like I was too close. So I'm just making myself, giving myself a, a little bit of favor, quarter inch down, three eighths in. So we'll do some, so we'll pre-drill and, and uh, make all of our through holes so the screw, screw can literally go through this. And then we'll know when we line everything up and we clamp it, that all we have to do is follow this hole uh, into the depth where the screw will actually uh, go in. Okay, so for the, the uh, little black push button inserts, the inside diameter of those push buttons are three eighths of an inch. I've already measured it. I already kind of knew that, um, but just so you know, so we're using a three eighths inch drill bit to kind of just go down halfway through the thickness of this board. We don't want to go all the way through it because then we have nothing to grab when we screw it together. So we only want to, um, I have my drill press set. So literally I can't go any deeper. It's my own safety. If the drill press is your thing, I just set my, uh, my stop here. So it only goes this far. Um, and we're just going to chase the 964 hole that I had already previously drilled. If you're using a pistol drill, another little trick of the trade is obviously a steady hand. Still use the 3 8 drill bit, but actually put a little piece of um, 
masking tape around the drill around the drill bit itself right around here and it'll kind of just let you know exactly where to stop with it when so you don't go through it with your hand um you can go more or less as long as you don't go through the board you're safe <laughs> i mean you only need a little a little sliver of a thing for those black caps to actually push on there and for you to hide the head of the screw so um it's not rocket science it's kind of like whatever does the job and so we'll go ahead and we'll drill those holes All right, guys, so just so you understand the concept of what I was trying to do to give you a visual, um, this, this is what it looks like here with our uh, pre-drilled hole and our countersink. You can see just coming in a quarter inch, I mean, you have to be at that to, uh, in order to not go too far inside and miss the board completely for the, the, uh, the depth of the riser or the length. Um, so that's kind of what it looks like right there. This is the example of what that looks like with the screw in it. Um, so you get the gist and this is what it will fit like with the cap on it. So you can kind of, you're already getting the feel of what it's going to look like when it's all together and painted. So we'll go ahead, we'll, we'll put, we'll clamp this all up. I'll show you what that looks like and glue it together, screw it down, um, clamp it all up and then we can uh, actually put some paint on it. So here we are guys back at the saw and I've already got the front placed, flipped it around, um, and what I did here was I just took a little um, of your standard uh, tight bond glue. Uh, this You don't have to use this ultimate wood glue. You can use any wood glue of your choice at any home store. Um, and I just used the same um, either 8th inch or 964 ths Either will, will do so you don't split this wood. Obviously, anybody who's ever worked with Ikea furniture or any kind of MDF, this stuff tends to split super, super easy when... Um, when drilling into the grain versus the cross grain. So um, a little bit of bead of glue, I just kind of put on this very thin. You don't need a lot. Um, and then I put it all together, kind of just make sure everything fits nice and snug. And then I screwed in um, with my inch and five eighths uh, uh, drill bits. I'm sorry, with my inch and five eighths um, wood screws or drywall screws. Okay, guys, here it is all assembled, fully assembled, and the glue is dried. Um, we're going to use two coats of this black. Um, I just have black, like either gloss or semi-gloss is what I would use on this. And just for the purposes of this video, in case if anybody's curious, this might be overkill. But this is the exact paint that I used at any home store, at any Home Depot, anything like that. It's not stuff I usually put links in the description for um, because it's honestly just a standard issue when you go to any any place and you say, hey, I just want um, black paint that covers wood um, and not rust metal. And usually it's um, it's latex based. It is not oil based, just for the record. Um, and what I apply it with is some smooth surface, um, uh, nappy rollers, six inch rollers on a roller, and that's it. Two coats, 
and you're done. So I'm gonna let this paint sit here and dry. And when the video continues, you'll see me back inside. I'll be putting the riser up on top of this. Kind of, you'll see right off the bat what it's going to look like. Um, and then I'll show you how to secure it to the riser. So it's all one piece. All right, guys. So I've given myself a full day for the glue to dry on my spacer and my, my, uh, my two coats of black paint to dry. Kind of see how it looks in this video. Um, still a little fragile. It's just a square and it's not really secured to keep it all kind of straight and, and stuff. So be a little gentle with it. Don't be thrashing it around. I just put these furniture pads on here because, um, my floor, there's a love hate relationship. I, I love the way it looks, but it's, uh, I have an old 1700s house. If you can see from the beams and everything that I've rebuilt. So the floor is very soft. Um, as much as I like the way it looks, it isn't user friendly for uh, for this kind of project. I'm just gonna put that in place. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna fasten this. Um, and I'll get to the length of the boards and stuff in a minute. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use, we'll talk more about this, but I'm gonna use this half inch MDF board. Uh, we'll talk about size and lengths and pre-drill holes and all that stuff in a second. But this is half inch obviously. And this is half, uh, I'm sorry, and the riser right there is half inch as well on the inside. So what I went with this, uh, I, I'm terrible with links in the description. I'm still very new to the video and I'm sorry that, the, uh, that um, my video is shaking. Um, but I wound up using these right here, these one inch um, number eight uh, sheet metal screws. You can find them on any... Uh, any hardware store or any home store at all. You can buy them by the bulk pack or whatever. But these are exactly one inch. And they look like this. Um, do you have to use these screws? No, you can use anything that, that I would say is one inch long. Um, for this particular screw, um, the inside diameter is uh, is something you wanna, you wanna use the inside diameter of the screw. So right here I'm using this um, 7 64ths drill bit to drill the inside diameter of um, of my screw. And if in case you're not good with measurements or in case you're like, you have no idea, you've never worked with tools, I just basically go to the Home Depot and I kind of hold my drill bit up like that. And um, I don't know if you can see that, but I always just kind of eyeball, okay, the inside diameter of the screw versus the inside diameter or the outside diameter of the drill bit. And if they're the same and the threads are still a little bit bigger than the drill bit, you're golden, that's gonna be good. Um, another little side note too on the tips is obviously if this is half inch and this is half inch, um, I'm sorry, if this is half inch and this is half inch and you'll see when I put it together, if you're worried about when I screw this through here like this, will it or will it not push my limits as far as um, poking through the artwork Yes, uh, you, you're pushing the limits. You don't want to. You don't want to punch through the hole and punch through your artwork and ruin it. So on that tip, instead of buying a shorter screw, you really need the threads to bite in because this is holding it together. Um, you're not going to pick up the whole cabinet with the riser, but you will pick up this whole riser with the spacer in one piece. So you do want it to kind of hold together and hold structure. So to solve that issue, just to um, shorten your length, but just shorten it a thread or two. Um, I use these right here. These are number six uh, zinc washers at any home store. You can buy them in 12 packs, 25 packs, 50 packs, 100 packs. It doesn't matter. But this is what I'm going to use. You use one or two. Use your judgment. And um, and and it'll prevent you from, um, when you screw this in, that the, the actual screw will keep screwing in deeper and then and eventually poke through your artwork, which is what you don't want to happen. So this just saves you from that, just a tip. Okay guys, so uh, this will be the first time that I actually put this riser on the spacer. So my immediate reaction is gonna be exactly the same as yours if you're still following me. Um, the first thing I did here was on these risers, you can see these little white buttons here, right here. I wound up just pulling off the outer edge ones on the riser with just a pair of pliers or, or a flat screwdriver or something. They're just little kind of push thumbtack uh, kind of things that mount on your floor because we want this to, to sit real flush on the top edge of the spacer. So here it goes, guys. It goes nothing.
kind of just lining it up like this, squaring it up, making it look real nice and even. You guys could probably, sorry about the, the video. Um, just doing my best to kind of even it up, even it up. But of course, when I screw the whole thing together, um, by default inside, when I screw it in there, it's going to kind of line itself up anyway. So this is just for appearance's sake. But there's my spacer. You can see it. this is next to my other um, 16 inch riser. So I think I did not too, darn, not too darn shabby with guessing the height on that, with the exception of the T-molding. And if it's just a little off like this, guys, um, like literally by a hair or something, don't fret that you screwed up the riser, because you didn't. You probably just, just put another furniture stop around the bottom or something. Just to, you just probably just need just enough thickness. And we're also guessing on the level of this floor. It could be like this, this, whatever. Once I get the whole cabinet on there, I'll know like, okay, is it standing at it? Is it looking straight? Is it not? So I'm gonna show you how to fasten this spacer to this riser. But so far, I think it looks pretty good. I'm not totally disappointed. Um, and again, I, I'll, uh, I'll get even more of a, a solid reaction on whether or not I like this or not. Um, but it is an idea, and I'm glad you guys are just uh, st sticking with me just to kind of go through this process. Okay, so what we're looking at here, right here, guys, is the very top of my riser. And I'm going to kind of show you what I did to mount, what I'm going to do to mount the... Um, this space, this riser spacer to the underneath of this. Um, so what I'm gonna do is basically, I just took a measurement from the inside of these two diameters, these support diameters. I can't do here because there's no way I'd be able to drill it from the bottom and actually secure it. So the front and the back are out. So we have to use the sides. So what I did is I just measured in between there. And this has, to, this is, this doesn't have to be rocket science, guys. This is, so I think I made it 14 and 5 eighths. I went out to the garage. I cut some strips. And the height, I basically just wanted the height to hit the floor. So we know that this spacer is three and a quarter inches high. And then as long as you got a good couple of inches, you can go all the way to the top if you want. But as long as you got at least a good couple of inches of meat on, on the rest of that board to kind of fasten it to the actual sidewall of the riser itself. Um, that's going to be good enough. You don't need, you don't need to come all the way to the top, but if you have some extra scrap wood lying around or some extra MDF, and if you've already made this spacer and you bought it, you probably still do. Um, I, th these just happen to be what I had lying around. So I have six inches wide. Um, and then, and of course, 14 and a half inches long, uh, da, 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 right there. Um, so that's what I did as far as these holes again, not rocket science. So we know that we have three quarter, um, we have, uh, an inch, uh, three and God, I'm losing my train of thought. So we have three and a quarter inches of the riser spacer that I built from the ground up. And then the rest of this is on the actual riser of the street fighter. So putting this on the floor. I just kind of evenly distributed this, these holes. This is again, not rocket science guys, like just kind of even them up, put them one in the middle, two on the sides. You don't need the exact dimensions to this. I think I did an inch and a half on each side. And then I literally measured the, the middle of this, which is whatever it is, 14 and five eighths. So that's gonna be like seven and five sixteenths in case you actually just have to have the center and you're that kind of person. So that's what I did guys. Um, I've already measured, so there was no way I could screw up uh, which side I want to face the top of the riser, which side I want to face the bottom. It's just a, a nice rule of thumb. So I wanted my clean side that I was going to see inside the riser with, that's not all marked up. On um, I'm going to put that against the face like this. So I know this is my top because I have it marked. And this is just going to fit in here like this, guys. Fits in there like a charm. Um, same thing here. You can see it's just scrap. It's 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 not anything to write home about. I'm just gonna put that on both sides. And what I'm gonna do to to measure this up, we already have it on the floor. It looks nice. It looks exactly where I want it to be. 
um, with the exception maybe just leveling it out with the furniture thing, but we're gonna do that dead last. We're gonna do that literally when it's when it's done. Um, I'm just gonna stamp that in, just kind of hold that in place. And what I'm gonna do is use my 764 stroke bit and just make little, little marks. I'm not trying to drill through the board or anything. I just wanna make little marks. I'm chasing my pre-drill holes through this uh, MDF board and just pre-drilling it so I know exactly where those holes need to be in this riser. And then I can just take the board out like this. And then I kinda of just put my drill tip. This is all half inch MDF anyway, or 7 16 I just kinda of put my, um, my drill bit like this, not so I'm going through the board like this, but maybe just to, just shy of it. And then I kind of just put my fingertip on it. I put a little masking tape around the drill, and then when I pre-drill, and then when I go and I follow through and drill all the holes in it, I know that once I hit that masking tape, I should go no further, and that way it prevents me from punching through the 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 side of the riser and through your artwork. That It's just a safety thing that I do. Um, just take your time drilling um, and y you should be safe to go. So you can see the tape on my drill bit. So you can see that I won't uh, Drill through the depth to just kind of put it on there like that so I know that I'm safe. And drill my hole. Okay, so now that we have our holes pre-drilled, this is our, our little screw with the washer on it just so we, we get our depth. And now we can just uh, screw the board in. Screwing in pretty easy by hand, no problem, no power tools needed. So here it is guys, all uh, all assembled. You can see I pick it up in one piece. It, it's really, really sturdy. Feels really, really good, really secure. Um, all I did was take those, um, those buttons that I had previously described, uh, the push buttons, and I just pushed them in my holes in the front Looks really good, really clean. Exceptionally happy with it. And um, moment of truth is we'll stick the cabinet on. Here we go. Slide it up there near it. Wow, that looks fantastic. Feel like my hands are up here. Good gameplay. Riser's not in my view. I can see the screen fully. I can see this upper artwork fantastically. Um, I'm really, really happy with it. Um, did, I honestly didn't know how it was gonna come out. I knew what I was gonna do, but I think this spacer makes an exceptional um, addition to kind of getting that height where you need it. I think it looks great. It matches the cabinet. It doesn't look like some some uh, some cobby thing that was put together. It looks really good, high quality, um, and it raises it up. It actually matches. This is my other 16 inch riser next to it. Really, really pleased with it. Um, again, the, the leveling and stuff is always gonna be a factor based on the floor of your home and where it's sitting um, in your house. So use your furniture, uh, your little felt furniture spacers to kind of make up that difference that has nothing to do with the riser build. Just keep that in mind. Um, another thing I just want to add is I use these, this is obviously a three and a half, three and a quarter inch high spacer. Um, you don't have to use that. I've tried every riser known to man on these builds. I've done 12 inch, 14 inch, 16 inch, 18 inch, 20 inch, all of it to see what the right factor was. I have a lot of tall, tall friends. 5'10", 6'1", 6'3", you name it. So like um, 18, 20 inch riser is great for over the six foot person. But underneath that, I'm telling you right now, like 16 inches is your max. And that, not just saying that from a five foot four person, but um, 
the more you raise this up, the more the control deck also rises up. And before you know it, you're playing like a T-Rex and it's not, it's not a comfortable game play. So you definitely have to split the difference because you're never going to adjust this length. This is the cabinet. It is what it is. Um, so 16 inch is the sweet spot uh, for these risers. And I'm super, super pumped. And when I say 16 inch, I mean from here to, to the top of this, not the recessed inside the cabinet. Um, definitely think this was, you know, afterthoughts on this whole thing it was a cheaper way out. Just in case you guys are looking for this, I know there's design flaws and people are like, yeah, I don't want to pony up the dough, but four, four to 500 is fair. Even with all the mods I do in this cab, I think it's fair. More than that, definitely no. Um, and I love to mod games and I realize these are never going to be perfect guys. They're never going to, they're never going to be exactly what we want unless we want to pony up a grand or, or $1,200 for all the trimmings and every single thing we want. And that company is just never going to do that. It's just honest. Um, not hating on the company, love the company. Cause the bottom line is we could have none of these. So that's my, uh, that's my tidbit on it. Um, it's my little rant. Sorry. Um, but let me know what you guys think about this whole riser build. Uh, my next build is gonna be the deck protector and making one larger to kind of come over the T-molding here so there's no way we're gonna damage the artwork. And we'll go over that in the next video. Um, thanks guys for watching. If you like it, comments are welcome, pros, cons, whatever you think about this. I will be doing, I like it enough where I will be doing this to my Mortal Kombat Legacy Cabinet and, and mimicking everything that I did here. Um, dimensions and all if you have any questions comments please uh feel free to to drop the drop me a line let me know i'm pretty responsive with the comments uh for the most part no i'm not gonna make these in bulk and sell them to you so please don't add please don't ask that um but i'm more than happy to help you with anything you know and i'm pretty responsive to it so um again Dwayne, 8-bit vinyl thanks for watching guys and uh i'll see you on the next one